Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on normality testing using Microsoft Excel. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to test to see if a variable is normally distributed because that is an assumption of many parametric inferential statistics. Now, Excel does not have a built-in normality test like SPSS does, but there are several techniques we can use in Excel to run a preliminary test of normality. That is to get a general idea if a variable is normally distributed or not. Now, if you're using these data to conduct research that will ultimately end up in a manuscript and perhaps published, you're going to want to use normality tests like the ones in SPSS, uh, like a Kolmogorov Smirnoff or a Shapiro Wilk. What I'm going to demonstrate here in Excel is really not a substitute for the actual normality tests, but more of just a preliminary analysis that you can run quickly in Excel. Perhaps as you build up a data set, you want to test it repeatedly and see if the variables are normally distributed. That would be an appropriate usage of Excel as far as testing normality. So let's take a look at a few things we can do to approximate normality testing in Excel. So you see here I have three variables in columns A, B, and C here, and one I know to be normally distributed. I generated these values in SPSS using the random numbers function and selected normal distribution. I did the same thing for uh, the next distribution, except it's an exponential distribution. And then I have another one, it's a uniform distribution. So we would expect the normal variable here to be normally distributed. And of course, we expect exponential and uniform distributions to not be normally distributed. So the first thing we can do is we can check the skewness for each variable. So that would be, in this case, equal sign and then skew. That's the function in Excel. I'm going to go to cell A2 and then control shift down arrow and select all the scores in that column. And you can see we have a skewness of 0 0.08. And then if I autofill this to the right, I'll get the skewness for exponential and uniform. And you can see exponential skewness is 1.45 and uniform is fairly close to zero. So again, we know in advance that the normal variable is normally distributed and we know that these two variables are not. And you can see that the skewness stands out a bit for the exponential variable. But as far as normal compared to uniform, they're fairly similar. They're both fairly close to zero. So just based on skewness alone, of course, we can't determine normality, but it's information that can help us to. And a few rules exist in terms of evaluating skewness. Uh, a couple of them are that the absolute value of the skewness cannot exceed one. So in that case here, both the normal and uniform distributions would meet that criterion and the exponential would not. Another rule is the skewness cannot exceed two times the square root of six divided by the sample size. So let me demonstrate that in a function. So that would be equal to two asterisk and then the square root SQRT of six divided by, and the sample size in this case is 100. So that would be a value of 0.48. So if we use this guideline, again, both the normal variable and the uniform variable would fall within this rule. The next thing we can do is to run a box plot. Now I'm using Excel 2016, which is the first year that the box plot is available from the insert charts menu. 
So first I'm going to select the normal variable. So I'm just going to control shift down arrow and select all the data and then go to the chart section and you can see the one that has the uh, small histogram on it, the insert statistic chart that also has the box plot, what they call a box and whisker. And I'll make this a little easier to read. I'll change the style and make the background black and then the color make it orange and we can see here that according to the box plot we have no outliers for the normal variable and the characteristics of the distribution look normal based on the configuration here of the box plot the whiskers are of approximately equal length and the distance between the first quartile and the median and the median and the third quartile are roughly equal. So now we can select the exponential and uniform data. So go over here with the, with the blue line here and just move it over to exponential. So now this box plot is evaluating, evaluating the exponential variable and we can see there are several outliers, there's three above the top whisker here. Again, if we select uniform, looking at the box plot, we don't have any outliers, but we can see that the difference between the first quartile and the median is greater than the difference between the median and the third quartile. So again, this doesn't automatically mean that it's not normally distributed. This is just information like the skewness that we use to factor into whether or not a variable is normally distributed. So the box plot's important. I'm going to move it over to the side. But probably the most important chart we want to generate here would be a histogram. So if I go back to selecting the normal variable, control shift down arrow. I go back to insert and charts. I'm going to select a histogram. Again, I'm going to change the style and the color. And we can see this is the histogram for the normal variable, which we know is normally distributed. I'll delete the chart title here. And make this a little larger. So we can see this does look approximately normal. This looks like a normal distribution. We can do the same thing we did with the box plot. We can drag the selected range over to exponential and we can see this is the histogram for the exponential distribution and this is, this is clearly not normal. And similarly we look at the uniform distribution, this does not appear to be normal either. So taking all this evidence together, the skewness, the box plots, and the histograms, in this instance, if I did not know that this was a normal distribution, and this was exponential, this was uniform, I would still probably make an educated guess that this variable is normally distributed, and these two variables were not. I have loaded these data into SPSS and run the test of normality there. And I'll show you that. This is the output view for running a test of normality. And I have separate videos that cover uh, how to do this. But you can see we have the normal variable, the exponential variable, and the uniform variable. And looking at the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality, we can see that the normal variable we would assume is normally distributed because it has a non-statistically significant finding here, 0.614. And the exponential and uniform variables we would assume are not normally distributed because we have a statistically significant finding for the Shapiro-Wilk for both of those variables. So again, this is the output you'd want to use when writing a manuscript, but Excel does offer some valuable tools that help us to make an educated guess regarding the normality of a variable. 
I hope you found this video on normality testing in Excel to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.